Welcome to Worthy to the Core, Feel the Freedom of Embodying Your Soul's Purpose. I am, yes, reading this from a book that I published last year, Holistic Mental Health. It's a collaborative book project that also included a summit. I have been a holistic therapist for 20 years. I'm also an Akashic Records channel. And we have volume two of this book coming out in the spring of 2024. So I'm recording this for a number of reasons. It's something I've wanted to do for a while, which is read my chapter, the chapter that I wrote for this book out loud so that you can receive its medicine and see how this book is structured. So if you want to grab a copy for yourself off of Amazon or a signed copy off of my site, I will include those links in the description for you. But this is also for practitioners who want to get a taste of what this book feels like, what it would be like to share your story, to share your guidance with the collective so that we can be guided more towards a an individualistic approach to mental health. And as some of you may already know, if you listen to my Akashic Musings podcast, I don't really believe in the term mental health so much, even physical health. I feel like we just are, right? Like there aren't components of who we are necessarily. Sometimes we break those apart so that we can look at them more clearly and get diagnostics underway and get this conscious understanding of who we are so that we can better ourselves. But really at the end of the day, it's about just learning and getting educated about how we naturally operate and how our energy is designed to move through this lifetime. So this book really helps get you there. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous group of people. One of the things that I really underestimated when I joined this project, when I created this project was how beautiful of a network was going to be created with the people who authored chapters in this book. I learned a ton from these people, not only in discussing their chapters, but particularly during the summit when we were doing interviews. And um, I feel like we could do one of these every single year and always have more content to be able to share because we're always learning more and more about how we each as individuals connect with energy, express our energy, connect with source and spirit, um, express what we call symptoms, which are really just cues and invitations into understanding ourselves more. So I'm going to read you my chapter so that you have a sense of understanding of not only receiving what I'm offering you here, but how this book is structured and what it has to offer you. So if it's something you want to pick up or if it's something you want to join as a practitioner, I will also leave that link here as well. And this is really for any holistic practitioner. You do not have to be a therapist. You do not have to be a psychiatrist or an MD. It's just somebody who has really thought outside of the box, outside of traditional mental health techniques, but been able to guide people into sustainable wellness. This could even be physical wellness, because like I said, they're all interconnected and serve one another. And that you have guidance that you know you can share with a different mix of people, different people are going to be picking up a book to read it than are going to be searching online. You know, it's, it's a different audience. It's a different perspective. And so having something in your hand that's tangible and like a toolbox that's tangible is a really, really beautiful resource to have as access when you're providing services to people, but also just to kind of carry with you or have even in your phone, if you get the ebook to connect with, if you're in a situation that you're like, I need a tool, right? This is what's going on. And then you can flip to that chapter and, and it'll guide you really from the heart. And that's, what's so beautiful is each of the people that authored in this book is they're so heart centered, just really beautiful people who are, you can feel the intimacy with them when you read the chapter, because they share their story in addition to sharing a tool. So my story is one that is very, very close to my heart. One that was the most traumatic event in my life at the same time that it was the most, the one I'm most grateful for because it completely changed how I show up, how I express myself, how deeply I've gotten to know myself, how much I now love myself and stand so confidently in who I am and what I do and what I share. So 
the first part of the chapter is telling you my story about sepsis. And then the second part is guiding you through a practice that allows you to start to feel into this connection with your soul and feel into um, the transformation that can happen when you let go a little bit of controlling all of the answers and everything that's going on in the day-to-day on earth, whether that has to do with your physical body or your emotions, but it's really connecting to that core essence of who you are rather than all the noise outside of it, right? All the conditioning, all the words and expectations from other people, including yourself, okay? So pull up a chair. We're gonna have story time. I'm gonna read this to you. All right. Let's just take a nice deep breath in. You can close your eyes if you want. If you prefer to receive this in the heart, I encourage you to keep your eyes closed and just receive the story as if you're relaxing and having someone read you a bedtime story and you're just allowing your body to sink into the space beneath you. And if you're not in a space where you can do that or you just want to receive this as more of information coming into your mind, you can do that as well. Okay, so this is chapter one in Holistic Mental Health, volume one, calm, clear, and in control for the rest of your life. And the name of this chapter is Worthy to the Core, Feel the Freedom of Embodying Your Soul's Purpose. A nurse came to my bedside and said, what took you so long to call 911? My reply was, my fever spiked from 99 to 105 in 30 minutes. I called as soon as I got to 105. And the nurse said, if you had waited 30 minutes longer, I don't know if there's anything we could have done for you. I became silent at this point and started thinking, holy shit, what the fuck? This is entirely surreal. The summer morning of August 3rd, 2016 began this way. And I was planning to take my kids to camp. I started feeling dizzy and nauseated. It escalated quickly and I told my husband, I'm gonna need you to drive the kids. He was rushing around like crazy because he wasn't planning on doing this that morning. He had to take our one-year-old because I felt so sick. I felt bad, but I knew I couldn't drive. I took my temperature and it was only 99.1, but it was clear my body was fighting something. I grabbed some fluids and headed upstairs to lay down. And during the 30 minutes my husband was gone, my temperature rose to 105. My body was shaking uncontrollably. My head was spinning and I was literally squirming in my skin. It felt like I was convulsing, but I did. I knew I wasn't having a seizure because I was conscious. As soon as my husband walked in the door, I said, honey, I think I need to call 911. And his reply was, really? Can I just drive you? I don't think I can make it, I said and I promptly started to throw up. I've never called 911 for myself. I've called for many of my clients. I've been a therapist for 20 years, but was never in a position where someone couldn't drive me to a doctor or hospital if I was really sick. My my husband put our baby girl in her crib and called 911. While he was on the phone, I collapsed to the floor. Seeing how wide his eyes were and how scared he was was something I never want to see again. He already had two family members in the hospital with life altering events. One who didn't survive beyond a couple of months. I kept thinking he doesn't need this on top of his already existing worry. I could hear my daughter who I was still nursing at the time screaming and crying from her crib. I couldn't bear the thought of leaving her behind. Being available to her when she was hungry was such an intimate and consistent experience for both of us. She's my third child and it was the most beautiful breastfeeding experience. It was so intimate. It lasted like three times as long as my other kids to past 15 months. And it was just such, it was such a beautiful experience that we both really enjoyed. My husband kept saying, she's fine. I'll take care of her. When the emergency team arrived, they came up to my bedroom and tried to get me to the bathroom. Even with them holding me, I could not tolerate any movement. I kept falling to the ground. They put me on a stretcher and carried me down the steps. I could see my husband watching his wife violently shaking 
and being carried away by the EMTs when he was already so stressed and emotional about his family. I just said, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm so sorry. I was crying and scared and he was petrified. He followed the stretcher as they took me to the ambulance. I kept seeing different people around the ambulance and calling their names, but no one was there. I was clearly hallucinating. Once I was in the ambulance, the EMT kept telling me, just breathe, honey. I need you to take long, deep breaths. I did the best I could. She was taking my blood pressure repeatedly and started an IV. I continued to shake and my arms and legs went numb. She just kept telling me to breathe and was asking the driver which route he was taking and how long it would take to get there. My head started to spin even faster and the EMT took my blood pressure again. She then started screaming to the front, we need to change the route. We need to get there within eight minutes, turn on the sirens. The sirens howled and the ambulance sped faster than I've ever felt before. Now I was petrified. I didn't know what was happening to me. I thought, I just have a stomach bug. What is happening? Breathe, just breathe deeply. Visions of my kids kept dancing through my head. How long am I gonna be at the hospital? Who's gonna get the kids from camp? Did my husband get in touch with the babysitter for our youngest? Where is my phone? I need to make sure my husband's okay. The poor guy has to drive to me and then back in time for the kids to get home. Breathe, just breathe deeply all the way to your toes. It's okay, it's okay, it's going to be okay. Is it going to be okay? Is something really wrong with me? I'm in the best shape of my life. I just started running. I'm eating like a champ. It's summer and I'm swimming with my kids. What the actual fuck is happening? When we arrived at the hospital, I was briskly whisked to a quarantine area to rule out meningitis among other things. The staff suited up in full body attire to do preliminary testing. They hooked me up to IV antibiotics and medication to stop the body shaking. It felt like I was convulsing, but I knew I wasn't seizing because I was fully conscious, even though I was super out of it. A little while later, they opened my door and confirmed that meningitis was no longer a concern. The doctor arrived and asked a long list of questions. I was so short of breath and dizzy and still violently shaking. I told her I need something for the shaking. I I can't. It felt unbearable. I was so uncomfortable. The nurse grabbed medication for me as the doctor and I continued to speak. It took me a while to get the words out. And now I just had to wait. My husband arrived. I was still shaking, but not as violently. He was sitting by my side and I was trying to explain what the doctor and I discussed between deep labored breaths. He was asking questions and all I kept saying, all I could get out was, I'm okay. I'm okay, it's okay, I'm okay, it's okay. I just wanted his hand on my arm. It was comforting to just have him by my side. The doctor came in a little while later. Everything looks good. You're gonna be discharged as soon as the rest of your lab work comes back. And I thought, what, seriously? Like how the actual fuck am I supposed to go home with this fever? Which had come down to about 101 at this point with the meds they were giving me. When I'm shaking and not being able to stand, I can hardly speak. Then my blood work came in. The doctor promptly came into the room. I'm admitting you, she said. Your lactic acid level is 3.9 and there are several other labs, including white cell count that present a concerning picture. She claimed this was likely a tick-borne illness and I was going to need a few days of IV antibiotics and further testing. And my thoughts were, my babies. No, I can't be away from my babies for that long. I have to nurse. I need a breast pump. Is there a breast pump in maternity that I can use? My poor husband, he has to go home to the kids. He can't be here with me. He needs to go. I will be taken care of. My husband left to get the kids and he said, I'll be back after I get the kids settled. After several hours, I was taken up to a room that I was sharing with another patient. No one told me what unit I was going to or what the treatment plan entailed other than IV antibiotics. The doctor kept forgetting to put the blood work orders in, so they drew my blood about six to eight times within a 12-hour period. I didn't feel well enough to care. 
My brother-in-law came to visit me because he was downstairs with his wife, who was also in the hospital. It was a Mazada family reunion. He eventually had to leave because I started violently shaking again. Little did I know this was something called the rigors, a very common symptom of sepsis. Unfortunately, I had no idea what was going on until it was printed on my discharge paperwork. Several specialists came in to see me. Infectious, infectious disease said this was definitely not tick-borne, but they were confused because they couldn't find the source of the infection. Overnight, my blood pressure tanked and they needed to give me more fluids. And apparently this is another symptom of septis, sepsis, which I found out later after doing my own research. Thankfully, a close friend of mine is a nurse who said I had sepsis from the second I called her to share what was going on. I would cry myself to sleep every night in the hospital because I miss my kids and being in my home and I felt worse than I'd ever felt in my life. I had no idea what was going on. No one was telling me anything. And the woman next to me was moaning incessantly. This was not the environment for me. Is it really the environment for anyone? I remember when I gave birth to all three of my kids and appreciated being in the hospital to a degree. Like there were so many people there to support you and take care of you and your baby as you learned the ropes and navigated a new normal while recovering from the birthing process. It was really a beautiful experience. And then there was this. Um, no, thanks. I'll give birth again several times over. But I was grateful for the medical community saving my life, for having a supportive and loving husband, for having my kids well taken care of and to be alive. This whole sepsis experience was the beginning of a completely different Laura. From this point forward, I was characterized as having a chronic illness. Unable to find the source of sepsis, I consulted with top immuno immunological researchers in New York City who discovered I have CVID, common variable immunodeficiency, and would need IgG, immunoglobulin G, the primary protein that fights infection in our immune system, IgG plasma infusions for the rest of my life. And at the time of this writing, I was infusing plasma once a week to provide immunity. And I did that for about eight years. And I I'm happy to say that as of this recording, I stopped infusing probably four months ago. My body started rejecting them. And it's, I believe it's because of all the healing I've been doing. I, I really do. I also developed autoimmunity and incurred significant damage to my neurological system from the sepsis. I couldn't walk or drive without severe dizziness for three years. The depths of fear, anger, depression, helplessness, and anxiety during this three year period post-sepsis were immense. I managed to work a few hours per week, but I had to cancel appointments regularly. I started considering leaving my practice because I couldn't provide the consistency that my clients were accustomed to. To delay this, I shifted my practice to entirely virtual about five months before the pandemic started. I tried going back to the office a few times, but I either collapsed and my husband had to pick me up or I became confused and I couldn't continue sessions. This is when I met with my neurologist regarding the cognitive impairment. And he told me, unfortunately, autonomic neuropathy is degenerative. And with the immunodeficiency behind it, I expect your symptoms to progress. I just didn't believe them. Miss Goody Two Shoes, who always people pleased and followed all the rules, was disagreeing with the doctor for the first time. I was like, I just, I didn't know why I just didn't believe him. I grew up conditioned to follow the guidance of authority figures, no matter what. And doctors were surely authority figures in my world. So choosing not to believe my neurologist, it felt like an act of defiance, but it's also where I started to play by my own tune and finding your own tune is not a fast and easy process. But if you've already started on this path, you'll move much more quickly. Chronic people pleasers may need several iterations. In this instance, it involved me doing my own research on how I could heal outside of the traditional medical system because I just knew. I don't know why I knew. This is, I mean, I've always been intuitive. I've been a therapist for 20 years, but like I, it was so clear. Like I just knew this is not going to be my life. Like I just know this, this is not going to be my life. This is not what my future holds. And so I started looking outside of the traditional medical system. I saw hundreds of specialists and world-renowned doctors, doctors. I waited months and months and months, up to eight months for one doctor. And I could confidently say that Western medicine could only take me so far. Upon finding meditation, Reiki, and the Akashic records, 
my eyes opened to an entirely different world than the one I was living in. There was infinite possibility here. I learned that energy is always moving. So our reality is always shifting. I learned the energetic impact of our ancestors, past lives and our inner child and the purpose of my soul and the reason for being in this body at this time with these experiences. Being a therapist for two decades, I felt like a bit of a dumbass that I had never touched the depths of healing with traditional psychotherapy that I was finding with all of this work. So I set out on a new adventure and I officially awakened to the absolute brilliance and natural wellness that I held within. And before, I have to say this, before I really committed to consciously learning about these practices, whether it's meditation or Reiki or Akashic Records, I felt the results and I felt how different I felt and I felt the shifts in me. And that's what, that was my buy-in. I didn't understand it yet. It didn't make any sense, but I just kept doing it because I felt so much better. And I noticed that on days I wouldn't meditate, I would be doing worse. And I'm like, huh, people have been trying to convince me to meditate for years. And I was like, oh, I suck at it. No, that's not for me. And it's just because I was clearly avoiding being in stillness with myself, or there were parts of me that I was not willing or able to see at the time. But what I realized with this adventure is that I was fine. In fact, I was perfect. Just as I was at that moment, I was present. I was focused in ways I hadn't been in my entire life. I had energy and confidence. I did not go in this for mental health stuff, right? I went in for physical healing and my anxiety diminished. My confidence soared. My clarity was my, I was just like so clear and decisive when I had been indecisive and in an indecisive Libra for my whole life. My physical body was only one aspect of who I was and it, along with my life experiences, didn't define me. I was part of something so much more. I'm about to take you through a practice that will undoubtedly get you on the path to feeling this magnificence. All you need is a pen, paper, time to yourself, and maybe even a candle and some tea. So if you want to pause this and go grab that, feel free. Because you're going to want to get yourself comfortable. I'm going to take you into a meditation where you can start to really feel into this relationship with your soul and into this essence of you that's beyond your physical body, beyond your mind, beyond your emotions. So once you've settled in and gotten comfortable, take a nice deep breath in and slowly release. Take another deep breath in and pause and exhale slowly. Close your eyes if you haven't already done so and just allow your breath to continue moving slowly and deeply at a pace that's comfortable for you. Allowing yourself to receive these words and allow yourself to be guided on a journey into the essence of your soul. You, my friend, are worthy to the core. You do not need a doctor, loved one, degree, health status, partner, body size, skin color, sexuality, or gender to determine your worth. You get to decide who you are. You get to decide how powerful and full of health and wealth you are. This decision comes from you. It comes from within. It comes from that voice inside you that knows so clearly who you are and what you're here for. And that voice comes from your soul and the energetic building blocks that make you who you are. When you truly feel into this relationship with your soul, others' opinions will not shake the fulfillment of your soul's mission. You won't feel the need to apologize for your uniqueness and off the beaten path, seemingly outlandish perspectives and desires. 
So let's get in touch with your soul. To fully embody your soul's purpose, you need to relax deeply and surrender to its vibration. Feeling into this experience is what makes it sustainable versus just knowing it. Take a moment to adjust your physical body so you can really sink into the space in which you're sitting. Take another breath in all the way to the base of your spine and exhale slowly. Take another deep breath in to the base of your spine and hold. And exhale slowly. Taking one more deep breath in all the way to the top of your head. And as you exhale, allow your jaw to loosen, your face to soften, your shoulders to fall back and down your arms and legs to feel heavier sinking into the space beneath you. Continuing to breathe slowly and deeply, knowing that you are deeply well. You are grounded and rooted in your body. Feel the roots extending from the bottom of your feet all the way into the depths of Mother Earth. Allow yourself to extract the nutrients of this root system, pulling it up into your body with your inhale. Imagine each of your cells lighting up with this sacred medicine from Mother Earth. And since 80% of the information that we hold is sent from the body to the brain, allow this light to travel upward from your cells in your body to deliver comforting, nourishing, stabilizing energy to the cells of your brain. as these cells of your brain fully illuminate. Rays of brightly cutter, colored energy extend beyond the top of your head. Like you're wearing a radiant crown. Allow this crown of radiant light to invite your higher self into this experience. Take note of what your higher self looks like. And what it feels like to be in its presence. Just bask in this for a moment, taking a few breaths here. take the hand of your higher self and allow it to guide you into the universe. You're floating amongst the stars while you remain grounded and safe in your body. You can take your time to get there. There's no rush. And while you're floating amongst the stars, 
You feel weightless and buoyant, free from your body and free from the world. Just enjoy this for a moment. You have perspective here. You can see things so clearly, like how your life events have unfolded and are unfolding and are paving a path for your highest good. Appreciate the beauty of the stars and the planets and the silence of this moment. This is your essence. This is the frequency of your soul. Loving, patient, spacious, free and light. With the ability to create anything and everything from this space from which all things are formed. This dark matter you're floating in between the stars is fertile ground where your soul plants your ideas and next steps. Watch what your higher self is planting right in front of you. Watch the purpose that's already planted here, that your higher self is watering, nourishing, and preparing for your continued journey on earth. Know that whether you have conscious awareness of this purpose, you're energetically witnessing and receiving the codes of it now, and you are intimately involved in its expansion. Take a deep breath in to pull these codes into each of your energy centers, your mind and your body. Feel as your body expands with the breath, increasing the capacity for actualizing your soul's desires. Identify where your purpose currently lives within you. Where in your body do you feel it emanating? It may be a physical sensation or an emotion or just a clear knowing of where it is. Send breath to this area to open even more space to hold this energy. And hold your breath briefly here to express your sincere intention to integrate these new codes. You can do this more than once if you'd like. Now take the hand of your higher self and float back to the space in which you're sitting slowly and gradually. Feel as your higher self rises back into the ether. Connect with the surface on which you're sitting or lying down. You can wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, stretch your neck, and open your eyes whenever you're ready. You're, feel, you're welcome to just 
pause this video and jot down any notes that came forward or just take a few minutes to be in silence with yourself. Just follow whatever feels aligned. You've just experienced a frequency unknown to most humans on this planet. This is the frequency of unconditional love, permanence, and unwavering clarity. The more you attune yourself to this space, the more it will be palpably felt and worthiness becomes automatic. And the most beautiful part is by embodying this vibration, you're inviting other people to witness the changes in you. So they are eager for a taste of the same. And this is why I always say that getting really intimate with your own energy is a ripple effect. It's of service for you to focus on cultivating this deep, intimate relationship with yourself and with your soul. Because when you do that, your service is already done. You don't even have to try to give to other people. They'll feel it from you. It will emanate from you. Your essence is powerful. It's powerful. So let me know how you like this video. And if you'd like me to come back and read the introduction and the closing chapter or any other chapters from this book. If you'd like to grab it, there's links in the description that you can grab on Amazon as an ebook or paperback, or you can also order it on my website for a signed copy if you'd like. And if you're a practitioner who would like more information or want to jump on a quick call with me to talk about this project, I will leave the link to the 2023 Holistic Mental Health Project. And I say 2023 because we're kicking off in December to start our writing. And then a lot of people have already written though. Um, the, a lot of the authors that are already in the, in the volume, um, but we're publishing in April, 2024. So I will leave that link as well. Or if you know someone that has really helped you a lot or that you know would be a very powerful voice in sharing what landmark approaches they have to guiding people into their highest level of vitality, please share that link with them. Reach out to me. This is a movement. It is a service to the collective and to rewriting the traditional quote unquote rules that exist around mental health care. I am very passionately devoted to this as a part of my purpose and as a part of my service. And so is every other author in this book and the ones who have signed on for volume two. So thank you for receiving this. Make sure to like and subscribe below. Hit the notification bell if you would like videos on the Akashic Records, on tapping and any other healing modalities and meditations that I offer you. And I will see you very soon. Have a good day.